Hey, it's Will from EDM Tips, and today I'm gonna tie this up once and for all how to make the best techno rumble available. There are loads of different tutorials online about this, but I wanted to condense the best techniques to make the best techno rumble into as short a tutorial as possible, so it's very quick for reference. So firstly, what is a techno rumble? If you listen to most true techno tracks, they have a kick and a rumbly bass line that fills up that low end and gives it a really industrial feel. So that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do today, and this is the result that we're going to end up with. I'm going to explain the sounds that we use, why we use them, the routing that you have to do within your digital audio workstation and everything else in between. I'm also going to show you at the end a bonus which is how to create a secondary bass line that's going to work with your kick and rumble bass without fighting with those sub frequencies. So without further ado let's hop into the door and get it done and you can download this project file for free below this video as well. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is why we use rumble bass in techno tracks. And it's been postured that it might be because in the old style warehouse raves, the kick would reverberate and it would create this big rumbling sound. So now it's kind of a psycho acoustic trick that we automatically kind of program into that techno to give it the feeling that it's being played in a massive warehouse. The speakers are distorting slightly and it just gives it a really gnarly industrial feel. Now, the second thing to note is that although it's the kick and the rumble and we're thinking of the bass frequency we're actually going to be working in a lot of the higher frequencies as well with what are called harmonics and this just gives a much more rounded delicate layered feel to the whole thing now I know delicate and techno might not go hand in hand but let's jump into it and you'll understand as we go along so the first thing we have to do is set up the project correctly and the way we're going to do this is use one kick sample and that's going to be the source for most of our other sounds and this is to provide cohesion and a sense of the same texture and frequencies from the sound uh, rather rather than using a different sound for the rumble, etc. So the way that we do that is first we create our kick track. Now you could do this with an audio or you could do it with MIDI. You can see here I've used a kick from the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit, which you can download below. And I've just put this into its own audio track. So let's have a quick listen to that. Quite a meter kick and yeah, just no processing at the moment. The next thing we need to do is create another audio track. So you can do that by pressing Command and T. And don't worry about this grouping yet, we'll look into that. Uh, so I've done that here and now we've got a track called Sub Rumble. Now you need this to be taking in the kick signal. So what you do is you can open up this little routing button here. You, and it doesn't matter if you're not using Ableton, you can figure this out in any door that you're using as well, same rules apply. So you can see we've got the Sub Rumble track. We've taken the kick as the input. We've selected Post Effects and that means that this kick is going to be fed into this audio track after it's gone through these effects that I'm going to be showing you on the kick soon. Then we choose in for the uh, monitoring and yeah, then we've just got that kick repeated. So here's the kick on its own on our kick track. And then we've got our sub rumble track track, which is just that kick um, kind of doubled up at the moment. So the next thing we need to do is look at the gain staging. Now, I've put, even though we're creating a big sound, I've put this kick here to minus six because we don't want all of these sounds building up to cause undesirable clipping in our chain. So that's the important thing to notice as well. And now we need to process that kick. Now, there are a few things in this process, so let's go through them all one by one. First, we're gonna add a delay and we're gonna add 100% wet on this. And this is because we don't want that dry sound doubled up. So that sounds a bit like this. So you can hear it's now delaying with a short feedback and I haven't put it in ping pong mode because I want this all in mono at the moment. Next, we want to kind of blur that sound a bit, take out some of the transient energy. So I'm gonna put a reverb on. And now it sounds like it's, you know, like a ping pong ball or something. We don't want too much reverb because then it can get too long and mess up our track. So I've got a decay time here of about 680 milliseconds, uh, most, mostly wet, but I still want a little bit of that transient energy because it gives that dun 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 It gives a bit more texture to it. So let's listen to that with the main kick drum. Now we want to distort that signal. So I'm gonna use the amp plugin. And now you can hear it's got that really industrial feel. Now I'm gonna use a pump compressor. 
Now you could use something like the LFO tool, but I want to show you how to do this just using the stock plugins in Ableton Live. So that's why I'm using this compressor and this is how I've rooted it. I've got a separate sidechain channel up here, uh, just with a little tick sound that plays. And I'm triggering this uh, sidechain compressor from that tick sound rather than the main kick because the main kick's quite a long sound. You can see here how short the tick sample is. And that means I get all the control of that pumping effect from the attack and the release on the compressor itself. So you just have to press this little button here, choose sidechain mode, take your audio input from your sidechain channel, which I always call SC, just because it's simple, quick, easy. Um, and then we can create this pumping effect. And this is so that it doesn't fight too much with the kick. So let's turn off the kick. This is with no compression. And you can hear it's being ducked when the kick plays. Now the next thing in that stage is to take out both some of the high frequencies because we don't want that big growly sound. We want to make this a rumble, right? So I'm gonna first throw on an EQ, take out a lot of those high frequencies. So that was before. But what's going on here, you can see I've got this extra dip. Now the reason I've got this extra dip is because we go, if we go onto our main kick and then throw on an EQ, let's open this up and have a look at what's going on with this kick drum. Let's just turn off the EQ stuff. So I'll just play that kick on its own. You can see here this fundamental frequency, which is the main base of that kick, is hitting at about, let's see, it's about 44 hertz. So the trouble is, if our rumble is also hitting 44 hertz nice and loud, then those, that kick and that bass rumble are going to clash. So that's why if we go here, we can choose about 44 hertz. So I actually did a bit too high there. And now let's listen to it. That just takes out some of those bass frequencies within the rumble because the kick's already covering that. So this is when I turn that off. So you can hear it's a lot boomier, but it sounds cool. But with the kick, it's just too much mud, you know. So just be aware of that. You don't always have to do that, perhaps not that much, but that is definitely where mud can build up. Now after that, I've got a utility and that's just to make everything mono. I just want my main sub rumble mono because I don't want to run into phase issues with the sub frequencies. And that is basically your standard kick and sub rumble. Now you can see what I've done here is I've grouped them together. So first let's, let's turn on this processing for the kick. I just added a little bit of saturation to add some uh, upper harmonics because the saturator is what's going to add um, multiples of the um, bass frequency, the fundamental frequency, which we already looked at was 44 hertz, and this will just give it a slightly crunchier sound. So let's have a listen to this kick with the sub saturator, not sub saturator. So it's very subtle. I'm also adding a compressor just to really get that kick pumping. So very subtle and that EQ was just for uh, example. And then if we turn them both on, we have now rooted them into this group. And what we're gonna do here is gel them together so they sound like they're coming from one place. So let's just get rid of this audio effect rack and have a look at uh, what's going on. So what we have got going on here on the chain is this. We've got another saturator. Again, that's just to warm up the sound, get it gelling together, add some of those high frequencies again. And I've taken the output down by the amount that I've driven it, otherwise we could run into clipping issues because it's going to be getting louder and louder and we're going to be approaching that headroom level. Then I've got a limiter, just to take in any stray transients, and then a utility to bring down that uh, increase level once again. But we don't need that yet. We're going to get to that later. So that is our main kick rumble. Now let's look at some more advanced techniques. So if we create another audio channel, we can call this mid rumble. 
And we could even just duplicate that sub rumble track, make sure that the input's coming from the kick. So that kick is going into the mid rumble, post effects again, and then choose the correct monitoring. Now the difference with this track is that I've done all the same techniques, but I've actually added just the mid frequencies. So you can see on the sub rumble, I've taken out the high frequencies on this mid rumble. Let's have a listen to it. There's a bit less reverb. I've added ping pong onto the delay because I want this to be in stereo. And I've still got the exact same pump compressor. So all I did for that was just grab the one that I created for the sub rumble, copy it and paste it here as well. And if you're wondering why my sub rumble um, pump compressor is before the EQ, it's because the EQ, sorry, because the compressor on Ableton can sometimes cause a clicking effect when it's being sidechain pumped. And this EQ afterwards is just taking out that high end as well. Now, I just want to quickly touch upon why I've got these as separate channels instead of just an audio effects rack on the kick, which you can double up the chains and do everything through there. It's simply a matter of ease of control. So I can very quickly see my different levels at the mixer level rather than having to dig into chains. And then I can just adjust the, uh, the volumes accordingly. So let's mix the sub rumble and the mid rumble into the main kick. So this is just the kick on its own. Let's bring up some sub rumble. And then some mid rumble just to add some ear candy. I think that was my wife there. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So now we've got the sub rumble and the mid rumble. Now let's go on to even more advanced techniques. And I have to say, I got this one from Oscar over at Underdog. Um, I thought this was a really good idea, just adding an extra bit of groove into that rumble. So what I've done is I've just used the exact same techno kick. I'm doing this slightly differently from how he, he does it because I want to, again, just use one sample to create that cohesion across uh, the, whole, the whole rumble. So I've just added this extra kick. Now this is not being fed from the main kick. It's literally just its own audio track with completely different processing. And that's because I want it to be following its own particular rhythm. So if we listen to the main kick and I've just added this I've added some reverb to kind of smear those transients again, soften it down so it's not like this. We're also allowing it to uh, take slightly longer time to decay with the reverb. We've got some amp again. Let's listen to it without the EQ. Giving that all that distortion, those upper harmonics. And then just honing in on the frequencies that we actually want. Now this one, I'm leaving it stereo, but if you look on this utility, I've got bass mono selected, and then every frequency below 120 Hertz is being summed to mono. And again, that's to avoid any kind of phase cancellation issues uh, with the sub frequencies, but I still want those higher frequencies to be in stereo. And again, I've just copied and pasted the, the same pump compressor to give it that sidechain feel. So let's have a listen to it. off. So it's very subtle, but as I said, this is where the nuance and the subtlety just comes together to create a really full professional sound. Even though at first appearance you might just think, okay, well, it's a kick in a rumble. You can, you can hear it's actually a lot more than that. So that's pretty much um, how to make a kick and rumble. I mean, there's nothing more to it. That's pretty much as advanced as you want to get. You could overcomplicate things. And if you can get your, the result that you want with fewer elements, then you're gonna be able to make, mix eat more easily. You're gonna be able to compose the whole track and arrange it more easily. So let's listen to it with a few other bits and bobs. And then I've got one other trick I really want to show you about the bass that you might have with a track that's structured like this. So we've just added an open hat. Closed hat, sorry. A ride symbol. Again, being pumped by the compressor. A little bit of percussion. Again, just being pumped by a compressor. 
A stab, a techno stab, you've got to have a techno stab, baby. And now, this is what I wanted to touch upon. You might think, well, what bass line could I have with this? Well, the sub rumble is really the main bass line of this track, the, cat, the kick and the sub rumble. But you might want some kind of mid bass. Now this is where you might cut out some of the lower frequencies, but it still gives the impression of a bass line. Now in this example, I've created a kind of 303 mock-up just using the analog synth in Ableton. And you can see it's actually not that bassy. So if we listen to it on its own, you can see everything under 130 hertz has been cut out, and that's because we don't want it clashing with those frequencies from um, the kick and the rumble itself. So I hope, really hope you've enjoyed that, guys. I've tried to condense it and explain things quickly. I actually did this in Ableton Live 10, so you can download this project file. I chose 10 because uh, there's nothing that you can't do in 10 that you can do in 11 when it comes to this tutorial. So if you use 10 or 11, you will be able to open up this project, build it out into a full track if you want. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, cheers and happy producing.